I think my earliest memory was between three and four. I have a vague memory of my grandma pushing me in a wheelchair, but she died in 1938. So I would only be three. But I have a distinct memory of being about four. So before the war, and of course at the top of Colston Street, half a mile from where we live, there was a chip shop owned by Crooks. It also showed toughies and packs, things like that. And of course, we couldn't get fish in that during the war much, so it really finished as a chip shop at the end of halfway through the war, but still carried on as a confectionery. And I got, for some reason, I got a quart, I got a farthing. I don't remember why or anything like that, whether I found it or not, I don't know. And <laughs> I ran across the street to get a quarter of a toothfish. Quarter of a toothfish for a farthing. Quarter of a penny, that is. <laughs> and uh, I tripped over some at the curb. I under the wheels of this damn great trolley bus, ready to take off. Now, if the driver had to see me, and he did see me, I'd have been, I wouldn't have been here. But he saw me, I, I got back up, it went, I, I got my quarter of a toughest like, you know. <laughs> and uh, so that's possibly one of very early memories. Now, we're, we're building up now towards the war time, really. But every Sunday morning, I do remember an ice cream bloke coming round. He's got a great big thing on front of his bike, um, well, a big box or something like that, and selling ice creams and like pop suckers, we call them. Yeah. I know you call them suckers or not. Yeah. And that long. And uh, it's obviously full, it was full of ice, it wouldn't be a fridge over like that, full of ice. I can remember, in, as I said to my dad one day, why ain't, he, why ain't he coming anymore? Because the war had started then, he'd have to go into the military. My dad said he got killed at Dunkirk. Really? Now, that's a distinct memory, because yeah. we're talking 1940, aren't we, really? Yeah. And it says, so I remember that distinctly. We had a, a large accumulator radio, and it was this accumulator in the corner of the room, which you had to lack air and things like that. Because I think, all tied in with DC current, I think these things were. Which every so often, we had two, one was charged up, every so often we'd have to take it to a shop, as kids, I'm talking doing war here in a in a bar. There'd be two or three of us, me and Frank Wilson, who's in history society. He'd go, we'd take a listen down to the Taylor's electric shop next to Rice's chip shop on Triangle to get it charged up. Leave it, next day we'd fetch it back, you see, while we use the other one. So I remember that distinctly. So I do remember a lot of the war. A, a hell of a lot of the war. Because things happen during war that you probably won't remember in peacetime. So I, I suppose me earliest memory, I vaguely remember Chamberlain and that, saying things, you know, but I wouldn't say I distinctly remember the same. It didn't mean a lot at that start. It did once it started, and it didn't mean a lot. So I would say one of my earliest memories, I'd be five. I was playing on the bike, kicking the tin around. So couldn't, get, couldn't get balls in those days. They were all rubber, rubber was wanted for the army. You couldn't get balls. And, uh, so you made your own, or kicked the tin around. This bloody aeroplane come over from Ilkeston. This is my, probably I'd say, my very earliest distinct memory of the war. We were waving to it. You know, we don't wear aeroplanes because we had comics, the all in comics. I'll go on to that later. You could see the you could see the three crew, the pilots, and they said, you actually see the helmet. I'd say it was about the height of the furnaces. A bit more perhaps, but it seemed seemed to be the height of the furnaces. And I thought it was, we waved to it. And I'm not saying we waved back some daft like that. I mean, there's me and Roy Cooks. And then it, it flew over. And then I could hear my mum shouting, Get off it, it's the Jerry. You know, that's how it's, uh, yeah, it's the Jerry. And then we heard the bomb drop on the canal, at, down the Nutbrook Canal, down the Airwash Canal where the Nutbrook joins it. Yeah. And that's a down great crater. Didn't hit anything. Just missed the casting plant at New Works. Do you remember that or not? His casting plant inside a canal. And they killed no end of fish. We went down the next day. There was fish, fish all over the place, like, you know. And we didn't do any damage. It must have been wanted to drop it on furnaces. Apparently, later on, we really had been after Rolls Royce. Actually, it was Sunday tea time, it was light. There's no chance, you know. Whether I thought Stanton was Rolls Royce or somewhere else, like, you know. Well, Stanton didn't get really bombed. 
I don't know. We can here let loose this 2,000 kilogram bomb. I've even researched the pilot's name. I know all the crew's name. You know, I can't remember off the top of my head. And uh, the plane actually later on got shot down over Ingle Mills by a, a Captain, Hur Captain Smith, a New Zealander, who flying a hurricane. And I've got photographs from Avi Lincolnshire Aviation Society and this engine is in the Lincolnshire Aviation Museum, I've seen it, the fetching it out of the sand at Ingle Mills, that's you know. Right. That's where we You've probably seen it, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that was the Heinkel 11. You know, that's a distinct memory, that is. And, uh, and of course, we thought, they were, we thought they were bombing after us, like me and Roy. Yeah, <laughs> it was, you know. And, well, quite a few saw it. There's quite a few who was in France, in the army, claimed they saw it. But they didn't. We did see it, like, yeah. And it was above us. That seemed to be the height of the furnaces. So it had let loose its bomb on the way getting back home, like, you know. And uh, we didn't do any damage. In fact, <laughs> I can remember later on, the, the secretary at Stanton Fishing Club said, it had done less bloody damage if it hit the casting plant, because it killed all his fish. <laughs> You know, quite funny that one, I thought. Yes. You know, thought more of it. And of course, various, I mean, very early in the war this was. It hadn't really got going, you know, even in 19... It was, 1939 was very much a, a cold war, building up to the war, wasn't it? And of course, I started school at five, and the school lane was where the, the school was, Allenfield School. That's where everybody went to school, the day school. And uh, I should have gone there. All we did there was, we went to sign on for the first day. We closed the school then. I started, I obviously started uh, when I was five. So it'd about, be, it'd be about September the 6th, wouldn't it? Yeah. As soon as school holidays. And we went to school on Hallenfield, on Cavendish Road, Hallenfield School. Top end of Cavendish. Yeah. Oh, a bit of that was Hallenfield School. But I know people, Hallenfield, went to about six schools because yeah. they hadn't decided where to put us. Some went to Gladstone, some went to Catholic. Oh, we all finished up at Allen Fields on Cavendish Road. Early, early memories of the war, and I think you, as kids, living through the war, you remember that a lot. Yeah. Another very early memory was, where are we now? We, 1940, say. But, and then the bombers started going over. Stanton men were building air raid shows at that time, early in the war. They built their own, you know, on the back. Yeah. Bricklayers and... They dug their own. The Allenfield men dug their own because it was on the allotments. Then the bricklayers come and put everything in, like a concrete thing, and then a smoke all of it, you know, yeah. for sound. Yeah. A big concrete entrance yeah. to stop the sound blast going down, yeah. down the entrance, like, you know. So I have distinct memories of spending many a night in an air raid shelter. In my pajamas, when we five, six, seven, that sort of age group. For two years, say. Yeah. Because they went over a lot, the German bombers you did, you know. Where would they the jump? Yeah. The Manchester a place with a lot of Manchester, Liverpool, Coventry yeah. was the main targets, like, you know. Yeah. They went over Stanton for some reason. Of course, it's always rumoured that Hitler wanted Stanton for himself. That's why Rolls Royce didn't get bombed a lot. Hitler wanted it for himself after the war. Yeah. I don't know how much truth there is. And of course, everything wrong with Russia, wouldn't it then? You know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, coupons for everything, really. Couldn't get a thing, right, really. So much meat. So, my mum went out without meat throughout the war. For me and my dad. Yeah. I was at school, my dad were at work. And home guard after, my dad. Yeah. So, eight, nine hours at work and three or four hours home guard. Yeah. Every night. Yeah. So, you know, there weren't much social side to life, no, really. No. In those days. So, but we've got past the... Uh, I got 111, don't we? The bombers were going over, listening to the bombers, you know. You know what I mean? It was a bit of a no, wasn't it? That's one of theirs. That's one of ours. That's one of theirs. There weren't many of ours, I can assure you. They're all, you could all stand a, a German aircraft, airplane, because the sound. I think they deliberately did the exhaust pipes to frighten people. The Stukas, certainly. Mm, yeah. They were meant to frighten the population. Yeah. I didn't say the Stukas around here. Of course, the own guard, everybody was in the own guard. If I wasn't gone to, where is it? Warlike, you know. Yeah. 
And lots of stamping people, of course, reserved occupations, like my dad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my dad was 38 when the war started. They volunteered, but they wouldn't take him. No. You know, they had to make sh things for the war, didn't they? Yeah. And, the, and my dad was moldy, you see. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, it was a source of most annoyance to my auntie Beryl. Yeah. Or Beryl, as she liked to call herself, who married my uncle Edward. She put in Everard. He was the only one. He was the only one in the Corns brothers who had to go to war because all of us in reserved occupations. There were six brothers, and she was a point of resentment. Why had my Everard gone to war? The rest of the Corns family hadn't. But he was in the officers. They were unimportant to a great extent, yeah. you know. And in fact, he finished up in a in the war camp in, in Burma. Yeah, and he said, "We come out all right. We're okay. Yeah. This was seventy. But anyhow, that's, that's how it goes into the families. Yeah. But I used to write to him regularly every week, you know. Yeah. Send, send a letter to him, like you could send letters, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. But uh, another thing about the war is, yeah. the age when you have comics, Wizard, Oxper, Adventure, yeah. my two comics every week was the Wizard and Film Fun. Yeah. And you do a swap round the streets. You know, somebody else have chicks own, somebody have a rainbow, somebody somebody have, have an adventure. Yeah. I learnt more about the war from Wizard than any book. My big hero was called Matt Braddock, Bonner Pilot. Oh, oh, I know it was all rubbish, really. He said, it always said, Matt, I said, I'm not flying Spitfires, they're too defensive. I want to attack the Germans, which means I'm flying a bomber. It's quite right, isn't it, really? Yeah. It was, it was that's a... The film fun were marvellous and all, yeah, lovely, smashing comic, that was film fun, a lot of and Joey Brown, yeah. all the old comedians, you know, you know, from the from pre-war days really, weren't they? Yeah. People like Rob Wilton and all them, with it, you know, yeah. fabulous comedians, really, my day. Yeah. Yeah, I still laugh at them now when I see them, yeah. yeah, and Jimmy James, yeah. Where did you go to the pictures, Danny? I didn't go to Law 5, that was a recognised age in those days, so I didn't really go before the war. And my very first picture, I remember, went to Rips. And it was Yankee Doodle Dandy, Jimmy Kaye. And it's still one of my favourite yeah. films. I watch it every time it comes on telly, C.B. Cohen's life. He dances down his steps of the White House. That dancer's down his steps of the White House. He's a wonder dancer, 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 isn't he? Jimmy Kaye. Who he called him? Himself, I'm not a dancer, yeah. I'm a hoofer. Yeah, oh, right. the old vaudeville. And people like Charlie Chaplin, Lol and all. Lol. Yeah. Stan Lowe, they all started out in musicals, yeah, didn't they? Yeah. Lancashire Clog Dancers and, yeah, you yeah, know, and Max yeah. Senates and all them. They all started out like yeah. that. Did you used to go for the... Matinees. matinees Definitely. Matinees, you know, yeah. and of course, your matinees were all things like Flash Gordon. Yeah. And all them, you know. With the sparks. With, yeah. with the, <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. All pre-war stuff. Yeah. They weren't really making them films. And frightening films. And were bloody frightening. Boris Karloff, and, and zombies and zombies and vampires. You used to walk on, you know, sometimes. <laughs> getting dusk. After matinee, just getting dusk. Because you want a large light anywhere. No. In fact, you were allowed a torch, I think, but you had, you had to have a, a thing over it, like a, a cover of it. So it shine up in there. Bike lamps had like a, a lid of it, you know, yeah. so everything shone down. But you saw a vampire or a zombie up every tree like, you know, didn't yeah. you? You know, when you're walking home. Yeah, vivid imagination as a kid. Well, of course you had. And, uh, but the mark, you liked to be frightened, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, and then, then realised you were safe. Of course you was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as you got to the top of the street, the you know, well, rubber ran all the way on that. Yeah. In fact, it ran most of the way on, if I'm honest. Yeah. A lot of films doing more propaganda. Mm. And I do remember a lot of these. Target for tonight. Yeah. This was a bomber pilot. And there was a group casting Lenny Cheshire that made the film. Who came VC, didn't he? Yeah. Everything was propaganda. Yeah. I can remember going to King's. Didn't the strike just be a propaganda there? Not particularly, no. Yeah. No, because you were seeing what was happening. Yeah. You didn't try to hide anything. No. Obviously, you didn't show everything. No. You don't show your bodies and things like that. And of course, we all had our little chance, didn't we? Yeah. It's raining, it's pouring, or it was in bed snowing. Hey, you only got one ball, yours in the orbit at all. <laughs> and things like that, yeah. now, you know. Yeah. We know all them, you see. 
Yeah, it's Mother's stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is, well, really. It is. These, these will die with people like me, won't they? Yeah. You know, these sort of Absolutely. things. Yeah, of course they will. In fact, another one on Crompton Street, before my time, used to be what's called the night soil, man. Yeah. 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 Oh, empty the toilets? Well, em middens. Yeah. Middens. Yeah. They became toilets when they had a flush chain later on. Right. That was my lifetime. In the early 30s and 20s, my dad's time, there was just a plank yeah. with a hole, and everything dropped into like a cesspit. And they come down with a great big shovels and things, shoved them into this semi shakily giant iron thing, stunk and and took it down to the service farm at Alan Fields. Yeah. Just across the railway line, you know, the yeah. gates down there. That's where it went. I know me, no, tell me, I, we didn't, because it was just before my time. And our toilets were 30 yards up the yard anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody had piss bottles, because unders we called them, didn't they? Yeah. You know, two or three of them in the house. Right. And you used them and all at night. And then winter was going off 30 yards up the yard. Everything on ration. And that sort of thing, and it? What you remember as kids are, you know. We didn't bother us. Things no. on ration. We all could get in fights for pashas and some bloody tagish bloody passing clouds. Passing clouds, yeah. But pashas were the sweeping nuts. Yeah. And nobody liked but had to smoke like, you know. Yeah. We all on ration. My dad smoked craven, eh? We gave a lot of coupons away, you know, to people because we didn't he didn't smoke much any.